Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, The AI Revolution, Optimizing Operations in the Digital Age. I am thrilled to have you all join us as we delve into another important topic. My name is Millie Ventura, and I'm the Business Development Manager for the Palm Beach region here at Castle Group. And I'll be your host for this session alongside my partners, Aileen Zarilla and Jessica Raffel. Joining us today is Marcy Kravitz, Director, Community Association Relations, and Corey Kravitz, attorney at COVID's Schifrin Nesbitt. Before we kick off our discussion, I invite you to actively engage by asking questions in the chat. Give me one second, I'm gonna to scroll to the next page real quick. Displayed on the screen is the information on how to submit a question. To ensure we make the most of everyone's time, we'll address all the questions at the end of the, se of the session. Aileen and Jess will be assisting with the chat. And before I turn it over to our panel of experts, I'd like to have everyone introduce themselves. Jess, would you like to go first? Sure, Jessica Raffel, I'm sure you've seen me here before. Um, I am Director of Business Development for the Miami region. So if your property management company is not doing what they said they would, it's time for us to have a call. And I believe our information will be uh, displayed a little later. So very excited to hear what we have planned today, Marcy and Corey. Aileen? Pressure is on. The pressure is definitely on. Hi, everyone. I'm Aileen Zarilla. I am um, the business development manager for the Broward region. I'm happy to connect with everyone soon and excited to hear about, you know, the, the new revolution. Marcy? Hi, everyone. Thank you for having me, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Marcy Kravitz. Um, Director of Community Association Relations for Hotwire Communications. I'm um, also a contributing writer for the Florida Community Association Journal, adjunct professor for Palm Beach State College, and published author of Common Sense Community Management. Welcome, everybody. Corey? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Corey Kravitz. I'm the managing partner for KSN's Florida office. We're a national law firm uh, representing thousands of associations, uh, condos, and HOAs across the country. Happy to happy to be here today. Thank you for the invite. Corey, and, and who's your friend behind you? What's his name? Is he also an attorney? It's mini me. That, yeah, that's my uh, <laughs> that's my AI assistant. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. Great. Well, thank you again. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to you, Marcy. If you want to kick it off. Okay, fantastic. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? Is it looking, is it, is it on? Are we good? It is not on the screen yet. Okay. Yes, it's on now. Are you seeing the full screen? We're good? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, for some reason. We're not seeing the full screen. Actually. I'm not seeing the full screen. Yeah, it's cut off over here to the right. Yep, it is cut off. So bear with me as we... Uh, Try to straighten this out. Um, Technical difficulties. Yes. We need an AI screen where we can say, okay, full screen. <laughs> All right, let's see how we can get this on full screen. I work for a technology company. No, nope, it's not going. Something's really strange here. Let me get back to... So just to tee off, I'll, I'll go ahead and um, read some questions that are already in here so that you have it top of mind while you're going through your presentation as you're working through the, the technical difficulties. Um, so if you have a chance to answer it, 
go right ahead. So Paul here says he wants to learn more about AI usage with documents, CCRs, I'm not sure what that means, guidelines, and so on. Negative um, uh, consequences or ramifications by utilizing legally or otherwise. So Corey, that sounds like it would be something for you. Yeah, Paul, I'll go ahead and jump in on that. Um, the CCRs are your governing documents, uh, your covenants and your restrictions. And so what what is being proposed in some communities are, are basically scanning in the CCRs uh, or, or covenants and restrictions and having a chat bot. Uh, it, you know, if someone asks, hey, um, are, what day are my garbage cans? Uh, what, what day is garbage day? The chat bot will have that programmed already in say oh your garbage day is such and such and then remind them that the rules are you know in terms of removing them afterward so um there's nothing wrong with that because your ccrs your governing documents are already public record uh, but the one thing you really want to keep in mind uh you know is your 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 data your personal data of your membership you know email addresses um you know the 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 you know, you know what's you know your the owner and the address is public record anything beyond that is not public record and you want to be careful once you put that information into something like chat gpt uh, you want to make sure that that will not become public domain um and the only way of doing that is 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 really working with you know with chat gpt for example once you put it in there that becomes public and you're subject to the terms and conditions of chat gpt's use of use agreement um so you just want to be careful with that kind of things that's that's where it can get a little bit hairy um if if you know personal data is being entered into a system you should have an opportunity for people to opt in or opt out um or at least give some kind of disclaimer uh, or let people know that that's happening Thank you, Corey. You can proceed with the screen like this if you like. We can see the slides on the left, but that's okay. We can see the content on the right. Marcy, if you can put it to 100% right now, it's at 111%. So it's a little too big for the screen. Thank you everyone for your support. working with Marcy here to get this working. We thank you for your patience. It to window. In the bottom right, you can see the percentage. Bottom right, now go back. Sorry, guys. Exit.
in the bottom right bottom right you can see the right there marcy mm -hmm. you can just uh yeah just like do it that way because like... yeah. we tried that aileen to put it to 100 and it didn't work when she went to presentation view so let's just do so, like this and go no, through slide by yes. slide yeah. okay i just want to say i i apologize for the um the delay this is the first time we are presenting this class so i thank everyone for their patience um the course learning objectives are here. Um, I'm going to go through that. It's understand the evolution of property management with the integration of technology, gain knowledge of artificial intelligence and its core functionalities, and explore how AI is transforming property management practices, and discover how AI is going to automate routine tasks for increasing efficiency. It's also going to save you a lot of time. It's going to optimize your preventative and predictive maintenance. And we're going to identify tools and platforms that utilize AI and property management and understand the benefits of embracing AI automation and property management and explore various strategies for implementing AI-driven solutions. So if you come away with one thing today, I'll be very happy. Um, we're gonna talk about what is AI and property management. It is revolutionizing the property management industry. And I read a quote today from Mark Cuban, and he says, if you don't know AI, you're going to fail, period, end of story. So this is gonna help you understand how you're going to leverage AI effectively in your day-to-day. -day. All right, so let's talk about the overview of the AI revolution and how machines are enabling us to be able to perform tasks and analyzing data, identifying patterns and making decisions um, just uh, like humans, a lot of people are, are saying that the uh, chat GPT is mimicking the functions and perception and reasoning, and AI is going to be um, something that is a standard. How many of you remember when Google came out? That was, that was amazing, how you could just ask Google a question and get the information. Algorithms that are allowing computers to learn from data are going to be making predictions and decisions. There's what's called neural networks, which computing systems are inspired by the structure and function of the human brain used uh, for pattern recognition and classification tasks. Uh, there's what's called natural language processing, AI techniques that enable computers to understand, interpret, and generate human language. And then there's the robotics, AI-driven machines capable of performing tasks autonomous, uh, autonomously or semi-autonomously. Um, so AI is going to transform how you do your job. Um, there's accounting automation, uh, economic growth. AI is projected to contribute 13 trillion to global economic growth by the end of the decade. Job transformation, approximately 80% of American jobs may see at least 10% of their tasks altered by AI, with nearly 20% experiencing at least 50% alteration. And then there's chat GPT adoption. And we're seeing that there's about 1 million users within five days of release when it first came out, and its user base has since grown to 180.5 million users highlighting its widespread adoption and influence in the AI landscape. So property management traditionally involves manual processes, and there are tasks that are done by um, automation now. We have uh, maintenance fee collection, uh, maintenance requests, uh, sale lease transfer, architectural review forms are uh, often done manually and uh, leading to inefficiencies and errors where a lot of software programs are now allowing for these manual processes to be automated through um, AI. And without the use of AI and data analysis tools, property managers are struggling to gain valuable insights from their data and this would hinder some decision-making um, and property performance tasks. So let's get into some of the um, 
transformation of property management and revolutionizing it. And before I move on, does um, Corey, do you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah, I mean, re real quickly, you know, we, we talked about the confidentiality of, of personal data. Um, and, and really, the only other issues from a legal standpoint that property managers want to, you know, be cognizant of is the accuracy um, of the information that AI is providing. Um, I, I know in, in our practice of law, you know, we don't use AI because, you know, if you, if you type in, you know, send me a case that represents X, Y, and Z, it'll give you something that's really, you know, sounds really good, but when you actually go in and and, re and, and, and read it, uh, you realize it's it's completely inaccurate. The case doesn't match, you know, what, what it stands for. The summary doesn't match the actual case. Um, and so, you know, it, it's it's one of those things where accuracy is really important. And then oversight is because of the accuracy, because of the inaccuracies, oversight is super imperative, um, especially from the for the property manager to, you know, see the data that's being provided, but then ultimately make the decision of whether or not you're going to use it, what parts you're going to use, what parts you're going to, you know, discard. Um, and, and the decision making should still be human and do not let AI make the decisions for you. Um, otherwise, we'll end up uh, in the Terminator movies. So in property, thank you, Corey. That, those are really great points. And in property management, streamlining tasks and transforming uh, management can help enrich your community association. And AI-powered automation streamlines routine tasks. Um, I, when I was managing properties, was able to, through an app, control the thermostats of certain areas in a building. And that's all done by AI. Um, collections and maintenance requests, uh, you can really uh, focus on bringing your property into the AI revolution by streamlining those tasks through AI and it's also a cost savings. Um, you can also reduce utility costs and your carbon footprint by utilizing AI. And there's certain apps now that use what's called predictive maintenance, which can minimize equipment breakdowns and you can actually monitor your equipment and you can avoid costly repairs by utilizing those AI tools. So there's unlocking advantages all around for effective management. You've got efficiency overload. Um, streamlining those manual processes are going to free you up as a manager. Um, you're going to have a lot more time for uh, focusing on what matters. Uh, with all those tasks flying off your desks, you'll be a superhero and saving the day and um, utilizing AI. Um, enhanced transparency. I'm going to get into how you can provide um, updates and surveys and newsletters and providing information through AI and promoting transparency, having clear communication, which will build trust within your uh, residents and then elevated resident experience. Um, there's you know so many different interfaces residents can utilize um, through softwares that are using AI and submitting those uh, maintenance requests. They can pay their dues online and with that, it's very proactive and you'll reduce the number of delinquencies in your association by and also elevating their experience through AI apps. Um, so who made chat GPT? I, I, I gotta I gotta get into that because it's it's very interesting. It was, um, built by OpenAI, and it was a research laboratory with both nonprofit and for-profit uh, branches. At the time of its founding, back in 2015, OpenAI had received funding from Amazon Web Services, which is really interesting, um, Infosys, and YC Research, and investors including Elon Musk and Peter Thiel. And Musk had since cut ties with the company while Microsoft provided $10 billion in funding for OpenAI in 2023. And the base version of ChatGPT 
is offered for free. So anybody can go on it and we're going to get into how you can utilize it. But there are tailored property management platforms that have been crafted for HOAs and condos specifically. And if you're with a management company, you're probably already using it now. There's a lot of machine learning AI algorithms that are built into software for the resident portal, um, for maintenance management, financial tools, document management, and reporting and analytics. So these are some fun features of property management that are currently being used by AI. So here are some case study um, examples. And I attended a class and I had learned so much about AI through um, understanding what others are, are using it for. Now, a lot of associations, and here are some examples, are using AI chatbot for questions. And you can actually build a chatbot where 24 seven, you're able to answer questions uh, for residents, even though your office is closed. Um, the Palms of Sarasota used an AI chatbot to answer questions and you feed it with frequently asked questions and answers and 30% reduction in calls and emails to the management office were proven from having this AI chatbot. Uh, and you can also collect data on specific requests. And then once you're seeing those requests, you can revise the chatbot to answer those questions that you're getting on often. Um, Bayside condominiums, these are all condominiums on the west coast of Florida. Um, they installed in, uh, smart thermostats. And think about it, nowadays with um, the internet and working for an internet company, I can attest that it's very important to have a reliable internet connection and having the bandwidth to handle all the devices. I mean, even residents these days are, are utilizing um, robo vacuums and thermostats and, and there's more and more people that are working remotely. Um, this particular condominium integrated their energy management system utilizing AI and they were able to optimize their heating and cooling based on um, occupancy. So think about those properties that are seasonal you're able to monitor those um, common areas and clubhouses by utilizing AI. And then there was the Lakeside Estates HOA. Um, they used predictive maintenance and they implemented a system where they were able to monitor when things needed to be um, maintained and, and, and all their building equipment. And there was a 20% reduction in maintenance costs. Can you imagine having everything automated so you don't have to think about it? You just set it and forget it. Uh, Village Green HOA, personalized resident portal powered by AI. Um, this particular association had their own dashboard where the residents were able to engage with the management company and they were able to increase their resident engagement and satisfaction and everything was done through AI. And that's, and if I can interject, that's the area where you want to be careful that, that people have, you know, people will understand that anything you type in um, is, is not confidential and, uh, you know, it becomes part of the algorithm. That's a really good point. I mean, the algorithm analyzes data and what you enter in, you want to make sure that you, it's not anything confidential or private, like Corey said. So the benefits of AI and property management, you can automate, streamline your tasks, and you can really focus on strategic initiatives and, and resident satisfaction. There's cost savings involved, and you can optimize your energy uh, usage, your utility costs. Predictive maintenance will minimize your equipment breakdowns and also improve uh, your decision making. So let's go into financial management and how... How is that uh, coming into play with AI? Making every penny count. Um, there are AI powered financial management tools uh, to help with the maintenance collections, expense tracking, uh, legal automation and management, and then regulatory compliance. There are softwares that can help you, especially now with all these new laws. How are you going to 
uh, be able to monitor when things are due. In the old days, I used to use Microsoft Outlook and I used to set up calendar reminders. But with AI, there's so many things you can do now to be able to make sure that you are in adherence with the legal standards and automating those tasks. Corey, did you want to talk about um, anything related to that um, as far as monitoring the legal? Yeah, and again, compliance? it's one of those things where if if AI generates a, you know, some sort of a calendar or a timeline of when things need to be submitted to the state or hold your annual meetings, it's still a really good idea to take that, uh, whatever was produced, forward it to your attorney, um, and let us, you know, dig in through the documents and just double check. Um, you know, the last thing, you know, if you rely on AI, AI it's not a defense. Um, you, you know, a mistake is a mistake. And at the end of the day, the, the board of directors is ultimately responsible. Um, but it doesn't hurt to have a second uh, set of eyes on anything that's produced. Good advice. Security management. So whether you're in a high rise or a single family home, AI technology is looking out for you when you're asleep. And even when you're not, your responsibility as a manager is that you have to ensure that everyone is safe. And if you install an AI powered security uh, so surveillance system that will end analyze all your video feeds in real time, and you can remotely monitor them, and you can detect any unusual activities. It will send alerts and potential security threats to you. So there are AI surveillance systems that can monitor your common areas, and it can detect suspicious behavior. Um, a lot of them now have facial recognition technology um, with uh, respect to um, access control. So that's also based on an AI platform and that's integrated with your access control system and that will help enhance security for your uh, association. And also with lighting will um, also offer you um, systems where you're able to have um, lighting that is um, based on um, the internet of things, which is like controlled through a smart home device. And you can also monitor your temperature control and anything um, remotely, you'll be able to access that through an AI controlled smart home device. And then there's the energy management system, like I talked before, monitoring your common areas and reducing costs and making sure that like say you're you're about to uh, get ready to have a party in the clubhouse, you can um, remotely be it through AI remotely control the uh, temperature and uh, and then you know within one, once it's once the uh, party is over, say you forget to turn off the thermostat, you can do that remotely as well. So let's talk about some of the. Um, platforms, I mean, they're, that have revolutionized HOA management and how you can access them. I talked about uh, ChatGPT. Uh, it's chat.openeye.com and you can use that for free. Um, there's one that's called Gemini and that is gemini.google.com and that's another one that you can use. Uh, Microsoft has one called Copilot and then there's what's called Stan AI, um, and that integrates seamlessly with many of the softwares that you might be familiar with in our um, community association management world, and that's Vantica, Buildium, and Yardi. Though uh, Stan AI, Stan AI also integrates with that. And there's also what's called EasyMGT, easy-mgt.com. And that is a real estate information hub that will empower your community to be able to access essential information. There's document sharing, and that will also help foster a seamless connection for not only um, your residents, but those that are potential buyers. 
All right. I talked a little bit about building equipment and predictive maintenance and AI driven predictive maintenance systems and sensors. So there's so many um, ways now that AI is detecting potential issues before they escalate. And this is a really great proactive approach as a manager for you to minimize downtime and any costly repairs. So you have what's called IOT, which is Internet of Things Sensor Data. And those sensors monitor the equipment performance, the environmental conditions and structural integrity, providing real-time insights into property conditions. And then you have maintenance records. Well, the historical data on past maintenance activities can be recorded, repairs and equipment performance inform predictive maintenance models and scheduling algorithms. And then you have resident feedback. There's um, AI is... Uh, allowing residents to report issues, provide feedback and valuable input and prioritizing and also scheduling uh, decisions. And then you've got weather forecasts with uh, external data, market trends. And when it comes to like hurricanes, this is the type of AI that can help support you in knowing when you have to maintain certain uh, equipments and um, when you need to optimize the schedule for maintaining those. So when it comes to high rise or single family home lawns, uh, AI is also running very smoothly and efficient. There's sensors for irrigation and sprinklers and predictive and preventative maintenance is a key feature influenced by AI for your association. Uh, Corey, did you wanna get into anything about that? Uh, sort of the maintenance, but I, I was just I was just brainstorming. I'm like, what how you know what other applications could be used in community associations? And I was thinking, how cool would it be to drive up to a guard gate, put your driver's license to the camera, and then the the software would automatically, you know, check to see if you're an owner, check to see if you're on a guest list, um, and if not, you know, send a text message, you know, to the owner. Ad, you know, admit or deny entry uh, and do it a lot faster than, you know, I think that would reduce lines at, you know, larger communities. Um, and and I'm going to go ahead and put a patent on this right after we get off this, uh, this webinar, <laughs> just in case, but, um, or maybe I'll team up with Castle and we'll, we'll put it together. We'll put it together. But um, I, I think there's a lot of applications that are going to be uh, forthcoming that'll save a lot of time, um and money uh going forward you know everyone's everyone's complaining with insurance and and uh, uh assessments going up uh you know for, for reserves and uh you know these are the types of things that will make costs go down in the future um hopefully and uh hopefully balance things out well, picture this, uh, a resident has a question uh, about the gym hours or needs to report a leak in, in their condo. Instead of waiting for a response, the resident can actually chat with a friendly AI bot and that's available 24 seven. And that, that can help you out. So that that's something that's gonna be interesting to see that, I mean, it, it's it's communicating with with a robot, but the robot's going to be able to alert you to let you know that there's an actual leak in the condo. So, um, so when it comes down to like administrative tasks and looking at what you can do to utilize AI for and to help support you in your management. Here are some examples. So you've got email management, which you it will help streamline your email, uh, calendar uh, management, data entry and uh, management, automated, automating your um, your documents, your forms, your spreadsheets. I mean, everything now is in the cloud. Um, formatting and editing, research assistance. Now, if you need to do any type of research. You can go online and ask ChatGPT for the information. Um, say for um, your meetings, you you want to put together a uh, an agenda. You can actually put what you want on the agenda in ChatGPT, and it's all about 
what you put in and how you tell it what to do. And it can come out with whatever you need as far as the agenda items. And if you want to go into more depth, you can have it do research on specific topics. Um, so some examples of administrative tasks, you can do announcements. Uh, say you're having um, a social event. Uh, say you want to put a um, a requisition out for a new position, uh, you can actually ask AI to draft a job description for you. Uh, performance reviews. Uh, you can tell AI that you'd like to be uh, have a performance review drafted for, say, a maintenance position, and you can get into all the details. It's what you feed into it is what you'll get out of it. Um, you can even revise all of your screening applications, um, your notices. When you're doing an email blast, you can tell ChatGPT what you want it to say, and it will spit it out for you. Even a newsletter. Um, I've done newsletters through ChatGPT, and it, it's amazing. You just give it all the information that you want to cover. Um, you can even copy and paste your minutes so that you can um, utilize everything that was involved in the in the meeting and let ChatGPT know that you want it to be done in a newsletter format and make it user-friendly for your residents. Um, you can have ChatGPT do an emergency preparedness plan for your specific property, uh, even requests for proposals. You can use ChatGPT and letting it know exactly what you want to bid out and specifically what you're looking for. And if you have the specifications for whatever it is that you're putting the request for, ChatGPT will spit it out. Now, it's not going to always be perfect but it helps you as a basis. You can use it as a foundation and then adjust it. Don't expect it to be perfect, but it helps you cut down on so much time. And what, especially when you're doing like specifications or bid requests, I mean, I always say go to your experts first and make sure that you utilize all your experts when you're bidding things out and getting those specifications. But say you want to put a bid form together that's going to help you, it will do that for you. And it will also proofread and edit anything that you want. You can ask it to do spell check for you. I'd love to see um, a program say, for, or, I'm sorry, I'd love no, to see a program okay. for architectural review applications. Um, do an initial review, doesn't meet the setback requirements, doesn't meet the, the color palette, you know, the color wheels. Does it, does it, um, you know, is is this type, you know, is it a shed? Is it allowed per the governing documents? You know, how often do our, our architectural um, applications submitted and, you know, the architectural committee either rubber stamps them or really doesn't even know what it's looking at. Um, so I think it's a cool opportunity for an initial review to see if it meets with the specifications and guidelines um, for the community. That, 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 that's fantastic. That's great stuff, Corey. And, and thank you for sharing that. Um, say you're getting ready to do a project and you need to plan for the project and you need to assign specific tasks and you need to track your progress and your milestones and facilitate how you're going to manage that project. You can actually put it, put in what you want and they'll and it'll put together a tracking system, an outline, a checklist, whatever it is that you need to help you with that project, ChatGPT will do that. Now, here's the kicker. It's all about the prompts. Now, you have to be specific. The more specific you are, the better ChatGPT is going to be, and it will understand exactly what you want. And you have to be able to provide the context and add the relevant context to your prompts. And you can use what's called multi-step prompts. You can break it down into smaller parts. And then you want to specify what type of response that you're looking for. And then specify whether you want a list, if you want a paragraph, if you want it in bullet point form, if you want it in outline form, or any other format that you're looking for. And then you can also give examples of, of what you're looking for. 
So there's what's called a chat GPT cheat sheet. And you can Google it and find it online and it will give you all the different key terms and prompts to help guide you. Because you know what they say, garbage in, garbage out. It's always best to be able to have a cheat sheet. So utilize that cheat sheet of how you're going to use the prompts and what you want to put in. Like say um, you want to have it proofread something or improve your writing. So you'll, you, you'll say proofread my writing, fix the grammar, fix the typos, format it in um, five paragraphs. And it'll specifically do that for you. Um, create a newsletter based on these minutes and include the um, committee updates. And then you can give the actual committee chair person's names and it will just spit it out for you. So these are just some of the things you can do, but it's all about the prompts. And we talked about um, energy management. But before I get to that, um, say you want to use um, Gemini, Google, or Copilot. You can say you're not happy with what ChatGPT spits out. You can go to Gemini, um, Google, or Copilot. And say you want to do a newsletter, say uh, create a sample newsletter and template for an HOA to include the following committee reports, president's message, announcements, friendly reminders, and social events. And then it'll spit out like the president's message. And you have to say for an HOA, and it'll, it'll, get, it'll give you a president's message, the committee report, um, say you want to include um, security update for each committee, social, it, it will do that for you. Um, so if you, if you, See, can, try, I, you can, can I, go ahead. can I say something in between it? I just had a question regarding the CEU credits. If anybody's in need of the CEU credits, please send me an email to Millie, uh, sorry, to M Ventura, M is in Millie, M Ventura at castlegroup.com. And then I'll go ahead and forward your information to Marcy so that she can provide the CEU credits. I will need your name and your uh, license number. Go ahead, Marcy. So, Thank you. Okay, sure. So another thing that you can use it for is drafting a violation notice. So you can tell it, uh, draft a violation notice for ABC HOA Association to include painting of the home that is clear, concise, and respectful from um, ABC Property Management Company. And it'll do that for you. It's amazing. All right, so I talked a little bit about um, AI and predicting things. And before we get into energy management, I just wanna say that when it comes to like high rise elevators to single family home, maintaining your lawns, it's going to keep everything running smoothly. And there's predictive maintenance software that has those algorithms that can help you. And you can actually schedule proactive maintenance tasks through those softwares. And that's going to help you in, in uh, managing your property. And also, it's going to provide cost savings. It's going to improve efficiency and enhance uh, safety. So when it comes to energy management, you are going to just love the fact that AI is going to optimize energy usage and you're going to look like a hero, especially now because it's important now that, like Corey said, with all the expenses, you're looking at insurance premiums and you're looking at your, I mean, budget season is here. So when it comes to smart lighting and high rises to energy efficient irrigation systems, AI is really paving the way for a more sustainable future for all of us in managing our properties. Corey, did you wanna add anything before I move on? Go ahead, doing a great job. Oh, thanks. And then when it comes to like, when I talked about 
I'm really big on um, preventative maintenance and regular inspections of your equipment. There's AI powered algorithms that I, like I said, can help automate things. I mean, from your generators to um, your cooling towers, to your variable speed drives. I mean, everything now is computerized and it's all being driven by AI. So looking to the future. Oh, the other thing is like leak mitigation. I know um, a lot of systems are being used over the internet. I know here at Hotwire, we offer water sensors. And this was something that I wish I had when I was managing high rises, because I can't tell you how many losses we had in claims because of uh, leak mitigation. There, there, were, there was constant, like even with... Um, washing machine hoses that that were rubber and not stainless steel braided hoses. So now with AI, there are solutions in preventing, preventing leaks. There's artificial intelligence leak detection technology and leak detection is, is something that will save you hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years. So you can protect your property from water damage and have less insurance claims by having um, a leak detection AI system in place. So let's talk about looking to the future. So what are the future trends and opportunities with AI and property management? Well, smart home automation. Uh, the IOT stands for the Internet of Things, and there are so many different devices that allow for remote monitoring. I know I can turn my uh, burglar alarm on and off if I need to, um, and there's so many things that remotely you can control your lighting. Um, think about the number of uh, devices that you have in your home. There are appliances that tell you when you're out of eggs. That is all powered by AI. So when it comes to property management, remote monitoring, and the various aspects of monitoring that, like we talked about, temperatures, lighting, and security, this is the, the way of the future. Energy efficiency, again, talked about adjusting those settings on the thermostats, um, making sure that you're able to monitor the environmental conditions. Machine learning algorithms are going to um, analyze historical data to predict property market trends, demands, and pricing fluctuations. Um, screening, I know that screening tenants is more and more becoming automated, and you can also use AI for that. Um, maintenance optimization, um, streamlining operations, routine tasks, collecting association dues, uh, lease renewals, maintenance requests, freeing up your time as a manager, and then enhancing the customer experience, your residents, being able to know that they can reach you 24 seven and that you're going to give them timely updates and reminders utilizing wow. AI. So these are all ways to um, improve by using AI for the future. Any questions or comments before I move on? On, on the issue of tenant screening, it's also, a, again, there, there needs to be the oversight, especially with tenant screening, um, to make sure there's no discriminatory practices that the algorithm has learned. Um, it's not uncommon. Historically, there would be deed restrictions, not, not necessarily in governing documents, because gov governing documents are obviously uh, more or less came around after the Civil Rights Act, but there there are old, you know, recorded deed restrictions that are discriminatory, um, and you want to make sure that the the algorithms aren't, you know, bringing those in to its decision making that could lead to a discriminatory outbreak, you know, um, outcome um, that could bring liability to the association. So again, oversight still super super important. Thank you for sharing that. And it doesn't mean that AI is going to eliminate the human factor. It's there to enhance. It's there to help support you as a manager. And utilizing ChatGPT 
say you you know you want to react to a, a complaint and you're like ready to just start typing. Well, sometimes it can be helpful for you to take a breather and say you get this nasty complaint, this email, put it into chat GPT, copy and paste it and say, create a um, an email response to this email and see see where it goes from there, so, you know, and see see what type of response that ChatGPT is advising on how you should respond. It can be very helpful. Um, you may need to modify it. Like I said, it may not be perfect. You may need to be more specific, say, and give it some details because you might already know the details behind this complaint. And then say that you want something objective. And again, it's all about what you put in and, and, what, and about what you're gonna get out. Um, Say um, you're preparing for a strategic plan for the next, um, say you got your um, your your um, SIRS inspection report and you need to send out a letter to the residents letting them know what's coming. Um, you can put all the details in about that into ChatGPT and give you a um, like an update or an announcement in a summary. It's very helpful that way. I mean, in a nutshell, property management tasks are going to be streamlined by using AI. And not only the tasks, but the through all your building equipment and automation, security, protecting your association members. And by embracing AI, you as a community manager are going to be creating a much more efficient, engaging, and sustainable environment for your residents. I mean, it's in a nutshell, AI isn't just a buzzword, it's here. Um, whether you like it or not, it's going to be something that you're going to have to use and don't be afraid of it. Um, I know before we got on, uh, Millie and I were talking about AOL. And how many of us remember AOL? You've got mail. And how scary was that to have like this robot voice tell you that you have email? <laughs> um, I remember when I was managing an association, um, they they didn't have internet and then they finally got it, but I had to unplug the fax machine to plug in the DSL. So it is here. And I say, get ready to ride the wave of the future because AI is on your side. It's going to make your community better. It's going to make it a better place for your residents to live, work, and play. So, and I just want to say thanks for, for having me. There's a lot more information that I could have covered, but we only had the one hour. This was the first time that I've given this class. And I can tell you that I use AI in my daily tasks. Um, I use it to communicate I'm on the board of my um, association, my HOA in Weston, Florida, and we use it a lot for our newsletters and it's been saving us a lot of time. So um, Marcy, on behalf uh, of Hot Flyer, I wanna thank you for having us here and uh, think of us when you do need um, a reliable internet connection for your television and internet needs. Marcy, can you reference those websites again that you uh, mentioned earlier? Can you? Just share the names again. Yeah, uh, find those for you. Perfect, thank you. Um, so, I mean, you can always Google artificial intelligent websites because there's new ones coming up all the time and there's so many new softwares that are coming out. Um, there's chat GPT, which is chat.openai.com, which is free. Um, through the Google and Apple, um, Google Play and through um, Apple apps, you can also download the paid apps for your phone and utilize those. I think there's one that's like $30 a year that's a more a, a advanced chat GPT. Um, there's Gemini, which is um, gemini.google.com. And that's also something to help you with. And then you've got, um, there's something called Nova app. Now I haven't used it, but I hear it's really good. It's uh, chat.novaapp.ai. 
And then there's Copilot, which is Microsoft. Copilot also does images for you. And then there's Stan AI, stan.ai slash product. And that particular one um, integrates with certain softwares like Vantica, Buildium, and Yardi. And then there's easy, E-A-S-Y dash M-G-T dot com, easy management. And that is a real estate information hub that is free if you sign up for your community and it will help have a portal for you to plant all of your data for your community. It also helps with document sharing and help um, store all the information that you need for your community. And I also want to thank Jonathan Wilson for joining us. He's in the chat and he he's from stan.ai. He wanted to remind us there's a www.stan.ai. And if you have questions about Stan AI, you can also email him personally, uh, at Jonathan at Jonathan uh, at Stan I. Stan, stan.ai. Um, oh, thanks also, for joining us. Um, yeah. And then Marcy, uh, we do have a board member asking about the um, board credits. And I know we talked about this yesterday, but perhaps you can talk about that. So I have not been made aware of whether or not my classes are certified for boards. And I was told that they have to take the the four hours in one session to cover all the requirements. So I still haven't gotten clarification on that. But if they need a certificate, I'd be happy to give them one. They can just email me at marcy.kravit at hotwiremail.com. And then they can, you know, get the, the, hopefully they'll be able to get the credit. There's still, it's still up in the air as to whether or not my classes are um, certified for board members. I know, you know, for managers, they're, they're certified. Uh, Marcy, are you going to be sharing the presentation with the attendees? I'd be happy to. Um, would you like me to send it to you and or would you prefer that they contact me directly and then I'll be happy to share it with them? I can send you the registration list so that you can forward your uh, presentation to the attendees. Okay, great. Um, uh, my my team will definitely make sure that we send it to all the attendees. Perfect. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And with that, it's 1259. So again, thank you to everyone who joined. And we look forward to next month's webinar, whatever may, that may be. Um, but thank you, Marcy Kravitz and Corey Kravitz for joining us. We really appreciate your time. And it was a, a wonderful presentation. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank you, everyone.